Hi everyone, you're sailing on Olive's Ark, and today I'm going to show you how to comfortably restrain a dog during veterinary procedures. So whether you're in the veterinary field or not, um, if you have a dog, you should know how to comfortably restrain it, whether it's going to be for nail clipping, tooth brushing, vaccines, your, your vet sometimes may simply ask you to lend a helping hand because it is your dog and you're familiar with it. I know I have the two chihuahuas here, um, so I can show you plenty of small dog techniques, but for big dogs, I'm going to use my friend Buddy here. To start, what I went ahead and did is, I ha you guys know I have very, very long hair, you just saw it in the beginning. I went ahead and put that up in just a low little bun type thing, just so it's out of the way. And I actually recommend the same thing for you guys. If you work in a veterinary or hospital setting, 100% you should have your hair up for work. So there's a couple ways you could do this. Um, Olive's a very submissive dog, but not so at the vet. One thing I recommend for small dogs, especially at the vet, there's usually like a table that the vet will set or the nurse will set the dog on. Uh, and what I recommend is whether it's you or whoever, go down to the dog's level because when you're doing procedures you you generally you do need to d restrain your dog in some um, capacity but to start the less you can stress them out the more calm they are so let's do the first type of restraint so what you basically need to do is restrain the head away and that's really your only concern for that one because as long as the head is out of the way you can do anything in the body and that's true for most veterinary procedures they just need the head out of the way and for you you just need to be able to hold the head and you should be doing this with a second person. One person should be designated to hold the dog, the other person should be designated to do whatever it is you're doing. But for a small dog, uh, what I recommend to start is you actually hold them in your arms, and Olive's a very dead weight type of dog. Uh, most dogs will not be like this, they'll try and stay upright, and I'll use Minnie in a second for this example. What you're gonna do is you're gonna basically put your dog in some sort of a headlock with your arm like this, and touch your shoulder if you can, it gives you a grip, and you're gonna have your dog's head right there. Small dogs' uh, faces cannot reach you to bite because they're small. Um, some small dogs, like corgis, actually have very large heads despite their size and they might be able to reach you. I'll show you a different technique in a second. But this is good enough. You're basically having them in a headlock and right now this is enough to do any pinching and prodding that you need to do, which I'm. this is also good practice as well. If you practice these techniques at home, it makes it less stressful at the vet. If a dog is starting to wiggle out, you're gonna pinch down to your chest a little more and the reason you use the crook of your elbows is because it's they can still breathe. You're not actually pinching the larynx. And then you further press down on their shoulder blades. If the vaccine's going into the shoulder, you're not gonna have space, but this will restrain them and kind of this combination holds the dog in place. Okay, and see, notice she's all on my lap this whole time. Some dogs may kick, that pressure keeps them down, okay? Another one that works for small dogs specifically, and big dogs too, is if you have them standing and they're a dog that does not submit, like Olive does not submit, all dogs have scruff on the back of their neck. Whether it's more or less, it depends on the breed of the dog, but all dogs have scruff. And this scruff is safe to grab, it's what mothers use when they grab puppies. One way to make them to submit without actually hurting them is you grab their scruff and you push to the ground. So let's do a couple of these with Minnie and a couple more tricks with small dogs and then we'll move on to the big dog. So let me show you the submissive trick with Minnie because Minnie does not like to go upside down like Olive does. Like if you try and lay her on your side, she's not gonna do it. So if she is not gonna lay down, you take the scruff and again, all dogs have the scruff. See, Minnie's a totally different breed, same scruff. And you're gonna push her down, submit it. So even if her body, and see she rolled and she never ever rolls. So holding the scruff down, and like I said, even if her body were up, it just gets you in a position to where now you can work with their body and their head can't turn to bite you. Again, you have the one where you could also use your arm. Minnie has a very small face, a very small neck, so generally I wouldn't do this with a dog with her head. Hers, it would be better to just physically hold the head, something like this, like I could have her hand in, um, her head in my hand and just physically hold her while she's there. And as you can see, she's wiggling, but I can just hold her skull. Again, never hold the neck. Lastly, a small dog tip that I want you to know is, especially during like nail trims or times when the feet are getting handled, I see a lot of people physically grabbing the feet and like trying to hold them out. And then uh, the dog's trying to pull away and then you're trying to pull harder and, and further. I always have a worry that when you try and pull the arm like this, you're gonna really hurt the wrist and you're really gonna hurt the hand of the paw. 
A spot on the dog that's not so small and can take a little more handling is their shoulder. So as long as you're not flexing the arm out, it doesn't go that way. But what you wanna do is you cup your hand behind the shoulder like this, and now they can't bend it back because you pushed it forward. So see how her paw is naturally out? And if she tries to pull back, she can't because my hand is locked behind that elbow. And so even though she's flexing muscles to try and pull her paw back, it's a lot less damaging and you're actually not hurting her paw. And then the person at the other end can delicately, more lightly, work on the paw and do the trimming while you hold the bulk of it forward. And when you do the back leg, hold out where the thigh is at. So see how her leg is naturally out, she can't tuck it away, and if she does, I'm blocking up where the joint would bend in. So that's one way to do it, is go back to where there's a larger muscle, something larger to grip onto, and that way your dog feels even if it's pulling, it's not as severe. Okay, now let's get rid of the chihuahuas for a second and talk about larger dogs. So this is probably where restraint is harder for most people. If you have a small dog, restraint is fairly easy because you have the muscle over the dog. Large dogs, that's where you need the handling skill because of a large dog, you don't have the muscle to overpower a large dog. So I'm gonna show you ways to where you can avoid the face because this works. I've seen people do this still, this works but look at how big the head is and the dog can actually reach me and bite my face. This is why I don't like doing a headlock type of thing with large dogs. Doing this and holding the skull is also not gonna work because depending on the size of your hands, you're not gonna have a large enough um, like surface area to grip on and the dog can still wiggle and thrash out. And again, you're right there by the face. Go ahead and what you do, like I said, you could do the way that I showed you with Minnie and Olive. You can grab the scruff of the neck on the dog and here I'll stand it up with my knee. You can grab the scruff of the neck on the dog and again, what you wanna do is kind of twist forward and push down and that will hold the face down to the ground. It pins the face, even if the rest of the body is up, which is fine because remember, you're taking a temperature, you're doing a vaccine, you're shaving something, putting a tube, taking um, stitches out, I don't know. But the rest of the body's free because you've taken the scruff of the neck and pinned the dog down. It also gives you more leverage because you can have more weight over the dog, especially if you're small like me. You go over and you can pin the dog down. So even if the dog is a lot larger than you and a lot powerful, you have the weight. Um, and dogs, all their power is in their legs for the most part. So when you pin it down by the neck like this, the front legs become immobilized essentially. It kind of looks a little scary when you go into the room with a patient and you're like pinning down the dog. So something that's a little less scary, it's the same idea as this but it's reverse. So what I like to do is I actually will face the dog, because you're basically gonna kind of come into each other at opposite sides. So I face the dog, and right where my leg is, I'll kind of prop the front of the dog up on my leg, and then I will do this. So I propped the dog on my leg, and then I put my shoulder over, and then I just pinch in. You don't wanna straighten your arm, because if the dog is thrashing, you don't wanna like break your arm or something like that. So. I usually just kind of keep it flexible or I hold it like this and use my other hand to get support. Because remember, you don't have to do anything to the dog. The other person should be doing whatever they're doing. But look, back end is still a lot of free space, but I pinned their neck um, using basically this. This section right here, that's where I have the neck pinned. Um, and again, um, it's not gonna really choke the dog out because there's so many corners that your dog can use to breathe. But it eliminates them from being able to wiggle out because their head is generally bigger than their neck, unless it's like a greyhound, but their head is bigger than their neck, so they're not gonna be able to get out of that tight little hole you've made with your thigh and arm. Also, the reason I like doing this way with larger dogs is because look at where their head's facing. That way. Their head is facing away from me, and I actually have two free hands, depending on how much the dog is kicking, and because now I have two free hands, because this is doing the head, you can actually hold the back of the dog a little more securely like this if you need to. This is just the best position that I like to do when it's a really large dog. I'll face the dog and I'll kind of like hug it from the opposite way. If you have a really, really large rowdy dog and just pinning the head is not enough, you could swing an arm up into that and go over kind of the shoulders and pin that. But make sure you're putting your leg between the arms. You want one, lo arm, um, you want one leg over your leg and one leg over under. And that way, in the front, you have a leg and a, and a face. And again, the face is away from you, but because you've separated the legs, 
they don't have as much traction and the dog can't really grip and push out of anything. Another tip, whether it is small or large dog, um, if you don't feel comfortable, if this one feels comfortable to you, but you are nervous about the dog's head being near your face, you can also cover this with a blanket and you do the same move but when you lock your arm, you're locking under where um, the excess towel is. And so that way it creates kind of a seal. And if the dog, even if the dog is thrashing, they're inside of this. And it does give a little more room for escape because you're holding this, the dog can kind of slip out of it. But if it does slip out, you just back away, give the dog a couple seconds to calm down. And usually whatever procedure we're trying to do can get done in enough time before the dog can slip out. All right guys, that's it. So I think the biggest tip overall is restrain the dog in what feels comfortable to you. Because if you don't feel comfortable and you don't have a good grip, it's not gonna work. So start with what feels good for you and then make adjustments from there on how the dog is feeling. So I hope that works for you guys. I post new videos every Friday. Um, sometimes they're about dogs, sometimes they're about bunnies and reptiles and tons of other stuff. So if you like pet videos and pet educational videos, Every Friday, I'm your girl. Go ahead and like and subscribe this video and I will see you in one week. Bye.